Hi guys, Mel the Train Shooter here again and with another Back to Basics video and this one is on grit. The stuff that we cover all our bases with and we cover our terrain with to make it look rocky and like ground. Now, it's a pretty simple Back to Basics video. There's a couple of techniques that I want to show you when putting this stuff on but it's not too complicated. So, what we'll do is we'll go straight eyes down and we'll start looking at the products that are available first and then we'll get into how to apply them. So. Eyes down, guys. Right, guys. Uh, what we've got straight off the top is fine grit. And this is from Gale Force 9's little basing tubs. Yeah, and it literally is fine grit. And you can get sand finer than this. Yeah, but this is the sort of finest for modelling or for, for what we use for wargaming, so to speak. I mean, there is finer stuff that's used for modelling. And you can get it in various shops and I'll talk about that in a moment. Moving on from the sand, we've got fine grit and this comes in various mediums. Gale Force 9 do a, a range of sets and as you can see it's a bit thicker. Yeah. And obviously they, they go up in grades of this. I haven't got any of the tubs to hand at the minute. But it goes up in grades. Then after this is more like stone chippings. Now this is from a, I can't remember which basing company I got this from, but basically it's a mixture of stone chipping, some large ones, some medium ones, and it's just my pick and mix but tub. You know, I pick in here, pick character pieces, and then use the smaller stuff for scatter. Okay, now I'm going to quickly talk, and like I say, it's a simple one because this stuff really is simple. I'm going to quickly talk about the economics of this. Now, straight off the bat, these hobby tubs that you get for basing your miniatures, they're great. They take up very little space. You know, they come in packs. You can get everything you need in one multi-pack. And they retail about three, four pound a tub, depending on where, you know, what manufacturer's tub you're buying. I mean, Games Workshop does tubs like this and various other manufacturers do the tubs and they all do them. But if you're serious about scenery, yeah, what you need to do is move on to a bigger supply. Yeah, and a cheaper supply because at the end of the day, this stuff is okay for doing odds and sods. But if you want to build terrain, yeah, then you're going to need quite a bit of this stuff. Yeah, and that's when you need to go to the train people and the, the train shops because there's a couple of manufacturers out there that do this sort of stuff. Now, this is a bag and it's got more than the Gale Force 9 in. And this is from a company called Jarvis Scenics. Okay, and they are, what you're, they're a British company. Uh, in America, you've got Woodlands who do very much the same, Woodland Scenics, and they produce bags of grit. Uh, they produce all sorts of things for train, ballast, etc. Yeah, and they do it in various grades. Now, there's more in here than there is in here. This costs £3.50, this costs £1.20. Okay, so you can get roughly Three times as much from Jarvis Scenics and the train shops than you can from what you call the hobby stores. So if you're building lots of terrain, yeah, you need to head to the train shops. Yeah, not the terrain shops, the train shops. Okay, and get it from there. Yeah, if you're not, then this is just a waste. Yeah, it's just going to sit on a shelf and, you know, you're better off sticking with the little tubs. Now, that's the sort of stuff that you can get from manufacturers, so to speak. Yeah, but... There's a couple of things I'd like to point out, and this stuff is free. It's outside, okay? Grit. You can find it on drives. You can find it at builders, merchants. It's all over the place. Other things that you can use are things like bird grit. Okay, big bag of bird grit. And what I'm going to do is quickly open this so you can see what's inside. Yeah, little hole in it. Okay, and if I pour this out, yeah, you can see it's slightly bigger than Gale Force's medium grit. Okay, mixture of stones, quite nice, a little dusty, but you know, it's bird grit. Now, three pound, one pound, one pound. Okay, obviously, it's a waste if you're only doing a couple of bases, but if you're doing terrain, one pound. Okay, on top of that, yeah, pigeon and poultry grit, okay, and this is just finer than this stuff, okay, it's a good mix, you can see it in the bag, uh, would you like me to open it for you? I think I will, 
I love getting messy. So I'll just rip that open a bit so you can see what I'm talking about. And as you can see, yeah, this stuff is much thicker. It's got shells in it, which is a bit of a pain in the backside. Yeah, but you can get shellless. I mean, the problem is that birds actually eat the shells to make the eggs, so that's why it's in there. Yeah, but you can get shellless grit. Now, just so you understand, this was a mighty one pound. Okay, so one pound twenty, one pound four or five pounds from GW, three pound fifty from Gale Force. Do you see where I'm going with this? Okay, basically. If you're serious about building a terrain, you've got to move away from the model suppliers, yeah, and start looking in alternative sources. And that includes things like the builders' merchants, uh, hobby and craft shops, aquariums, pet stores. Okay, just because the hobby community charges a near fortune for this stuff doesn't mean it's that price everywhere. A bit like PVA glue and many other things that we use in this hobby, yeah, especially the raw materials. Okay, and that's basically the sort of things that are out there. Now, of course, you can go out and you can collect stones like these from your drive. You can get small pieces of slate. You can get larger rocks. You can get wood chippings. But I'm going to keep away from those in this video because they're more feature stones. And I want to save those for a future video. And I want to look at basic graveling and texturing. You know, what we consider open, slightly rough ground, not mountainous. So as you can see, there's a wide range of of various textures of various sizes it's a wide range of supplies but what you should really take from this is if you're doing your models or perhaps one two small custom pieces of terrain these are good they don't take up much room yeah you're not going to be wasting with them you're not going to have a bag like this sitting around for the another 20 years waiting to be used if you're on about building lots of terrain and you want to build te terrain for a table for a club for a tournament or you know bulk in general you want to get get a building day on yeah start looking at alternative sources because it's out there and it's a lot cheaper now what i'm going to do quickly is i'm going to clean this all off and what i'll do is i'll bring our project so I can actually show you what we're doing. So back in a second. So guys, what we've got here is a simple polystyrene mound. I've carved it out, sanded it off, and then just given it a base coat of emulsion paint, brown emulsion paint. Now you can texture it without painting it. Yeah, especially if you intend to go all over the top, but it's good practice just to put a base coat down. Okay, the other benefit is that with it being white polystyrene, now I've painted it brown, we're not going to get the glare, so hopefully you'll be able to see this better. The other thing I want to mention is when you put a base coat down, paint is not glue. Okay, don't you don't just put grit onto wet paint, yeah? It will come off. What you need to do is use glue to glue things. Now, I know a lot of people will say, no, you can drop it on the paint, but trust me, over time and over playing, it will wear off. Use glue for gluing. So let's get stuck in with some graveling and gritting and, and texturing this up. Right, straight from the start, what you do when you're graveling is you actually work largest to smallest. So what we're gonna start off with is we're gonna start off with my big rocks. Okay, and I've got a couple of big ones here. Now, that one's got a nice flat edge, so that can sit on the top. That one's got a nice flat edge, so that can sit on the top, possibly with that one and probably another another, another one. So they, they can go there. Now, this one doesn't really sit that well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sink that in. And what I'm going to do is, dead simple, I've got my GW basing tool. So what I'll do is I'll quickly do this first. Yeah, so sink this in and all I'm going to do is because this isn't sealed I can still get access at the polystyrene underneath and I can break it and all I'm doing is I'm just breaking it off and making a, a socket for this to sit in so to speak yeah Whee! everywhere I love messy fun okay and that rock can sit in there quite nicely now Okay, so what I can do is I can put some PVA in. Yeah, so I've got my PVA here. Okay, fill that in. You'll notice I quite spludged that up and there's a reason for that. 
Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm first going to put my rock in. Yeah, and that will squeeze the PVA up round to the sides. And all I'm going to do is just quickly run my finger around, just smooth it off a bit. And that will hold that in situ as it dries. And what I'm going to do quickly now is just put a couple of blobs on these. Now I'm using neat PVA to stick these big rocks down. Yeah, because I want a good join. So we'll put that one there and that's spread out. And then we'll put some PVA here. Okay. And just drop these rocks in. Just like that. And then what hopefully we should get is a clump of rocks. Now you'll see with that one, the PVA hasn't spread that far. Okay guys, with that one there, Okay, it's spread quite a lot. Same with that one. And this is good because what we're going to be doing is building these up into little rock clusters. So what I'm going to do now is prepare for the next stage. And just before I do, quick little tip. If you dig out too much of your rock and you need to set it, use filler. Yeah, I'll be covering that in my next hill tutorial to be truthful. Yeah, but all you need to do is get a bit of this stuff. Yeah, squeeze it out and then literally just smooth it round and it'll dry in about an hour or so and then you can just carry on okay but in this case I've got it quite snug I think it's going to fit perfectly fine I don't need to use filler now what we're going to do is we're going to apply a slightly watered down base coat for the rest of the grit and the gravel so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go roughly over the top yeah, and this is where, and then I'm going to have a, another patch of grit there, another patch of grit there. Yeah, and you see what I'm doing, I'm just spreading little bits out. And then what I'm going to do is, with a wet brush, okay, I'm just going to start to spread this out and mix it in. Yeah, and you can you can glue grit and gravel on with a 50-50 mix, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, and you can apply 50-50 mix straight out of the tub. Yeah, but what I'm doing is I'm just simply putting neat PVA on, then using a wet brush to spread it out a bit. Yeah, now remember, these rocks are still wet, so they are going to move. You can wait till they dry. Yeah, but personally, I don't think there's a need to. You know, as long as you're careful about what you're doing you shouldn't have a problem and what I'm going to do is very quickly round all the rocks yeah and then these patches that I've done I'm just going to spread those out like so yeah spread that out again and I just need to come around here all around these rocks yeah, what you tend to get is you get clusters of rocks. It's rare to get just a single rock standing on its own. All you'll get is as weather and erosion and all those sort of things have moved the rocks down onto the ground. They've taken the big ones and they'll take the little ones with them as well. Okay, and so I will get some of the medium chipping. Now what I'm looking at is the small stones here. Yeah, and I'm just gonna sprinkle them around move them around don't worry if it doesn't seem like that they're, they're sticking that well okay because all this will be sealed and they will hold in okay all we're using the base coat for is to sort of adhere them to the main rocks adhere them to the surface well you know we're working on it and then when we seal it in that'll tie it in and bond it all so I'm literally I'm gonna put a few rocks there it's a gravelly patch, maybe maybe another big one. And you can literally see what I'm doing. I'm just scattering this stuff on. And there's little rock clusters. Okay, oh, I need a few round here. So I'm literally getting a pinch, sprinkling them, pushing them round. And this is, once again, this is arts and crafty. You know, have fun doing this. Don't get annoyed if they stick or don't go where you want to. Nature is never perfect. So sometimes just leave them as they are. Okay, and then just a couple around this one, I think. Actually, that one's quite big, so I'll flip that over and that can be a figure piece there. 
There you are, little rock cluster there, and we'll move those together. Yeah. Now, that's the main rocks done. What you can do is wait for those to completely dry, or if you're like me and impatient, you can raise your model up. And the reason I'm raising it up is because I'm expecting drips of PVA to run off this. I'm also expecting gravel to run off this, to be perfectly honest. Well, I'll show you about that in a second. So, back to our watered down PVA. And this time I've got literally watered down 50 50 mix of PVA to do the rest. And what I'm going to do. Is literally just paint it on. Do do do. I may skip forward on this because let's be honest, you don't want to sit there watching me paint this on. Right, guys, what I've done is I've covered roughly two thirds of this. Now, normally I'd cover the lot with a piece like this, but it's helpful to explain a bit of a process. And what I've got here is I've got a mix of fine sand with a little bit of medium grit. And that sort of replicates real ground. You know, you don't get real ground unless it's a beach. You don't get real ground with just fine sand on it. You know, it's always a mixture. Yeah, and all I'm literally going to do is I'm going to sprinkle it over. Literally just like this, and it is messy. And normally, I would have a piece of paper under here to catch it, but I was a little bit concerned about the paper and the white light. Now, if you've noticed, I'm going over the rocks I've already done, both sides, and I'm being quite liberal with this, you know, I'm, I'm letting it pile up, so to speak, and it's really building up around the edges, and I'll save that. And what I've done is, because I've only gone two thirds of the way, Obviously, I can leave that there, and what I can do is I can get the rest of my PVA, and then just carry on working with this wet, now. And this may seem a little silly with a piece like this, but if you're doing a large piece, you know, that you've got no chance of getting all the glue on, and then getting all the gravel on in one go, this is the way that you do it in sections. And it literally is, you know, you, you wet so much of it, you glue, you put the glue on so much of it, you gravel and then leave out an inch, inch and a half of still wet glue. And then when you come back with your watered down PVA, you just reapply it. Yeah, and you won't be able to see the join. But what this does is it lets you build it up section by section. Now, normally I would have a bit of paper under here to catch all this spilt gravel. So I can easily collect it up and put it back in my mixed tub. Okay, the reason that I haven't got it today is because I, I had a look at it and the paper was causing that many lighting problems that I thought, you know, I'll scrape it with my hands to be perfectly honest rather than collecting with a bit of paper. So I've covered the rest of it. And what I'm doing is I'm just gently, nicely covering it over. And you'll often get problems where it's quite straight, if you know what I mean. And quite often you can throw it at it. Well, like I say, don't worry about being too liberal with this stuff because you're going to collect the excess. Now, as far as I can see, I think I've done a good job of covering that. And what I'm going to do now is I... Oh, just a minute. I can see that in the camera. If I grab a handful like that and then... Oh, I can't do this. I'm going to struggle from this side. Sorry, guys. But... What I'd normally do is literally grab a handful and literally just throw it at the sides. I'm working back to front, so I'm not sure if this is even working. So where is it? It's there. There? Yeah, that's covered it. Okay? And I'm literally just going to leave this to dry now. Okay? And water down PVA, it's going to take about an hour before it starts to, to set properly. So what I'll do, guys, is I will come back in an hour and we can take a look at it then. So see you in an hour, guys. So it's been about an hour and a half, and for looking at it, I can tell that most of the actual grit has glued to the actual the polystyrene base. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shake off the excess. So simply lift it up. Okay, move me tubs out of the way. Ooh, horrible watch for the PVA on now. Wipe that off. There's PVA under there. Right, and then all I'm going to do is just simply shake off the excess. Yeah. 
couple of light taps. You don't need to go crazy with this. And there we have all the, what you call it, all the grit stuck down. A little bit of paper there. That's not stuck to it, it's just on it. Okay, and there we have it guys, a textured hill. Now, what I'll do quickly while you're here is I will scrape this up. Now, now a lot. Because I used a, a mixed grit tub, I can literally just scrape it all up and this can go straight back into my tub. And that's where it's going to go. And as you see, there's actually more on the table. Let's glue it down. There's more on the table than there is on the actual model. Okay, so although you need a reasonable amount of this stuff to do the project, it doesn't actually use that much to do the, the actual build. Now, I'm sorry I'm just rambling a bit because my mind's on getting this lot in. You will occasionally pick up lots of little bits of paper or polystyrene in your grit mix. Don't worry about it. You know, you can either pick them out individually if they go on a model, or if they do go on a model and it's just a tiny little fleck just paint over it. I mean, it really is that forgiving. If you are a bit, shall we say, a bit OCD with regards to mixing your grit and you know, you because the, we've piled it all on and you want your grits to be separate, then what you can do is you can use a sieve. Now sieves come in various grades and all you've got to do is basically just drop the lot into a sieve, sieve it in and obviously you'll get the fine, what do you call it, grit and sand going through and then you get the, the rougher stuff left in the sieve to put in a different pot. And like I say, you can get different grades of sieves if you look round. And so you can really kind of work it out and get them virtually back in the same pots they came out of. Yeah, but personally, I like the scatter effect. And so I just throw it in one tub. And I'll just get the, the rest of this quickly so we can move on. Sorry about this, guys. Get back right just very quickly it came out of that tub and it's gone back in that tub and it's still virtually full so the amount we've actually used doing this project is very little okay but you do need I use the entire of the tub pouring it over and basically so the weight holds it down it gets a good spread I don't miss any parts so next job now that's dry yeah if you look underneath Okay, you'll see where the, the glue has run over, you've got little bits of chips and stuff. And what you're going to do is dead simple. You get a piece of polystyrene, sorry, a piece of cardboard. Put it on the cardboard. Just rub it round. And what this will do is it will just smooth off the bottom. Because we've only got, it's only sticking to one layer of glue at the minute, it will come off. Once it's sealed, it won't. So the best time to do this is after you've actually glued the grit down, but before you seal it. So, there you are, and that's sorted all that. Now what I'm gonna do again is raise it up onto some bases. And it's time to finally seal it. And to seal it, we're gonna use that 50-50 mix. Now normally what I'd do is I'd get a spray ball here and I'd just give it a quick spray over with a 50-50 mix. But I broke it last night prepping for the tutorial. So it's gonna to have to be the brush method. Yeah, nice brush. And all I'm gonna do is start at the top and just spread it out. Now don't rub too vigorously. Because as I said, and I've always keep saying, PVA isn't waterproof, and while it's still drying, that's especially so. And what you can happen, what you can do is if you pile it on and just keep rubbing in one area, you can actually loosen the PVA that's underneath, and the grit will start to come off and move, and it's a horrendous mess. If that does happen, the best thing to do is just soak the area of the water down PVA and then just quickly sprinkle some more grit over, shake it off, and it should be fine. Now I'm guessing that you don't wanna sit here and watch me just seal this, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna 
stop the video now rather than fast forwarding it because it takes ages if I just film myself filming this it takes ages to sort of process and capture into Windows Live Media editor thing so I'm going to stop the video now and I'm going to come back when that's fully covered and there we have it guys it's completely covered with watered down PVA uh, it's got a sort of milky look to it now what you'll notice is there's a white rim around the edge and what happens is obviously it's watered down PVA, gravity's taking it to the edge, it's pooling at the edge and it's coming away. That's not a problem, that's what the cardboard's there for to catch the, those drips you can see, ooh, just underneath it, sticky fingers again. And they'll, they'll dry fine, absolutely fine. Now. As you're doing this and as you're putting the second coat on, don't be concerned if odd little bits of gravel drop off. All this means is that there was a bit of gravel or a bit of grit or a stone on top that wasn't really glued down, didn't have much contact with the, with the, the base coat of PVA. And so as we've re-soaked it, it's fallen off. The time to get concerned is if whole swathes are moving. So if you put your, if you dab your, your water down PVA on and it moves the entire lot of gravel, then you need to stop and you need to let the base coat underneath set. If you're really concerned or you're working on some sort of masterclass project, you know, some real good terrain, leave it overnight to set before you put the sealer coat on. Okay, it's as simple as that. This hobby, like many things, it's what you call it, you'll get out of it what you put in. So if you're happy with, you know, a bit of gravel here and, you know, a touch there, a few odd spots, it's not a problem. Yeah, just go for it. If you want a masterclass, put the time in, guys. It's as simple as that. Now, this needs to dry so I can show you the finished piece. Yeah, normally I'd just leave it, leave it to drip dry, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bang the hairdryer out and just dry it quickly so I can show you the finished piece. So, guys, what I'll do is I'll take this and get it dried, and I'll be back in just a moment. And here we have the finished piece, guys. Now, the 50-50 sealer coat that I've just put on, it's about 80-90% dry. I've dried it with a hair dryer. To be perfectly honest, yeah, it will dry up completely overnight. And I wouldn't really put any paint on it until it does dry completely. Now, one thing I've got to point out, and I'm not sure how well you can see this, but there's a patch there where the grit is missing and just round the edges. Yeah, especially there. Okay, the grit, there's no grit and it's bare polystyrene, bare base coated polystyrene. And what's happened is because I've been in a rush to get this done, I haven't let the original coat underneath the grit dry before I've come along and I've, I've gone and sealed it. And with that simple patch there, that what hap what's happened there is I've probably got my brush as I was dabbing away and I've just cleared that off and I haven't spotted it because it's been covered with PVA. Same with a little bit there. Yeah, with the sides, what's happened is as the watered PVA has run off the sides, yeah, it's literally eroded the gravel away. Now, you won't have these problems if you leave that base coat overnight, yeah, to dry completely before sealing it. But if it does happen, there's a few things you can do. You can ignore it if they're small patches and treat it like mud. You can get a small brush. Uh, a rough old hobbying brush like a base coating brush or something like that and just dab a little bit of watered down PVA in there and just sprinkle some gravel in and that will seal it. The other thing is you can just leave it until the flocking stage and just cover it with flock and no one will notice. Especially with these bits on the bottom it does tend to happen you know because what will happen is that the watered down PVA sealant will flow down it will really bunch up at the bottom as it's dripping off and that will soften it. Yeah, and like I say, all you've got to do is just put some flock over it around the bottom of the edges and blend it into the tables and you're fine. Now, a couple of other things to note is as I've been sealing it, I've got little bits of gravel on top of my rocks. Now, normally I don't normally mind this, but if it bothers you, just while it's wet, just get a brush and just wipe that gravel off. Yeah, it's that's all you have to do. Now, I've built this with a skirmish game in mind, like 40k or Saga or anything where the bases, you're looking at perhaps an inch sized bases that you want to move around and they don't have to be ranked. Okay, and that's why it's so uneven. If you were building them for, say, a game like uh, Fantasy Battles uh, and the, the Napoleonic games, Flames of War, where the bases are flat, 
then really you'd want a flat surface to lay your, your models on. Okay, and what you do in that case is, as you're putting your grit down, before you put your mixed grit down, you get your fine sand and you pour it over the areas that you want to be flat. And what that does is it's like a protective coating to make sure that that glue will only stick that fine grit. And then you can put your mixed grit around the edges, etc. Yeah, because the mixed grit won't stick to the areas you need because it's already covered with fine grit. And that's how you watch you call it. That's how you make sort of stable level platforms on hills for, for games with flat bases or if you just prefer that look. Now the other thing is if you're doing a path or you're doing a model like this and you get thicker grit in areas that you don't want it, it doesn't look realistic such as you've got a path and then you've got a couple of big rocks sitting in the middle that naturally just wouldn't be there. Once the sealant's dry what you can literally do is come along and clip it. And you can literally clip bits of this finer grit. You can't clip the rocks, the grey rocks, but this grit you can. And you can do it, literally come along and you can clip it off. Okay, and it's not separating from the base, it's just clipping the tops off. Same underneath, if you get any bits that are just sticking up or sticking out, you can literally just come along and clip them. Okay, and it is easy as that. So guys, there you have it. That is the back to basics video on gritting and texturing and adding small rocks to your terrain. Okay, you can go large, you can get slate, you can do fancy stuff. I'm saving that for a future video. This is all you need to know to build basic war games terrain and build your own terrain for your own table. So, hope you like it guys. Hope you found the video useful. I'm going to raise this up for a second. Hi guys. Oh, like I say, I really do hope you like it. If you have liked it, click like. If you've got anything to add, drop it in the comments. Any questions, drop them in the comments. I'm always glad to answer questions, and I'm always glad to hear from tips from other modelers. You know, this is how we learn. Uh, in the meantime, yeah, I'm available on Facebook. It's The Terrain Tutor. I'm, I've got a Twitter account. I'm not using it yet, but it's The Terrain Tutor, and the website is theterraintutor.co.uk. If you like this sort of stuff and you want to see more, subscribe to my channel, and I'll keep posting. In the meantime, you have a great day, guys. I've got to go get the kids. All the best. Ta-ra.